Namaste. <laughs> so for today's sutra, we have a wonderful quote from Ramana Maharshi. And it's very interesting how this came about. I was having one of my long chats with Richard Clark, and we both thought of this quote, but we remembered it differently. And we went looking through the various books and articles by and about Ramana Maharshi. We knew it came from him, but couldn't remember exactly where. So after a long search, I finally found it in one of my old videos here in the Uladu Narpadu series. So the interesting thing is that in the time between then and now, which is only about four years, the older versions, the older translations of the text have disappeared. And this brings up a big issue about editing sacred texts. In general, it shouldn't be done because the original edition, either by the original author or maybe translated by one of their direct students, is always going to be truer or closer to the source than a later edition by some editor who's not so closely connected. So this is why these texts should never be changed. And if you do bring out an updated, huh, edited version of a sacred text, it should be clearly marked as edited and there should be a link to the original source. So, with that understanding, now let's go look at these quotes from Ramana. When the Holy Scriptures proclaim, you are that which is declared to be the Supreme, if you think I am that, the Supreme, and not this, the body composed of five sheaths, instead of oneself knowing and being oneself by investigating what am I. It is due to absence of strength and maturity of mind, because that indeed always exists as one's own reality. Besides that, saying either I do not know myself or I have known myself is a wide ground for ridicule. Why? To make oneself an object known. Are there two selves, one of which can be known by the other? Because being one is the truth of everyone's experience. That is, whether they be a jnani or an agnani, everyone experiences the truth. I am one. So these are a wonderful pair of verses. Um, and it really nails the, the uh, point at which the neo uh miss. They hear that thou art that, tattvamasi, or I am Brahman, aham brahmasmi, and they think rather than know that I am Brahman. And they think that thinking is enough. But here Ramana soundly defeats them. It's so ironic because they pretend that they're teaching Ramana's teaching. But in fact, it's exactly what Ramana warned us against. So, it's really a bizarre thing. In the name of Ramana, they are teaching exactly what Ramana taught we should not think. Huh? 
rather than trying to think of the absolute, which is impossible, or know the self, which is equally ridiculous, <laughs> one should simply be the self, be one with all, be Brahman. And this has to be realized. And the way we realize it is by removing all of the misconceptions. It means all of the knowing, all of the thinking, and simply rest in the being and the experience of the truth. Now, this also brought up a wonderful sutra from the Buddha. Once upon a time, brethren, the Dasarahas had a kettle drum called Summoner. As it began to split, the Dasarahas fixed in ever another peg until the time came that the Summoner's original drumhead had vanished and only the framework of pegs remained. Even so, brethren, will the brethren become in the future. In other words, the Buddha is saying, when we receive a sacred teaching from a realized being, at once we begin to alter it. We begin to change it to fit our preconceived notions. And since mostly we are not enlightened, we kind of reduce the teaching to fit in our small area of knowledge. But knowing is the booby prize. Huh? Knowing the absolute truth is for the losers. Because knowing requires a knower, a known, and knowledge. So that's duality, or actually trinity, which is the fundamental unit of ontology. We've discussed that so many times in early series on this channel. That these differences between the subject, the object, and their relationship are exactly what keep us in ignorance to keep us in darkness and keep us from realizing the self because they introduce divisions into, into Brahman. They put boundaries around the self, separating the self from the not-self, the subject from the object, the knower from the known. So you see, this idea of knowing or thinking that we know the truth <laughs> is exactly the mechanism of untruth. This is very deep. But you should understand this is what is going on in almost every spiritual lineage, in almost every Sangha, in almost every teaching. The original teaching is becoming covered up just like the drum summoner was gradually changed from its original to simply a framework of pegs. You can imagine what happened. The original drum made of wood, as it became old, dried out, and from constant use, it began to split. So every time it would split, they would drive pegs into it to, to repair it. If you've seen it, if, or if you've worked with wood, you know, you have a split piece of wood. So you make a peg or a shim or a wedge shaped thing, and you drive it in with a hammer, and then you cut it and smooth it so that it becomes like a natural part of the surface. But if this goes on over a long period of time, eventually, all the original wood will be replaced by the pegs, the repairs. And it's the same with spiritual teachings. 
Over time, people introduce more and more changes until the whole thing is completely different from the original. Like if you go in the Buddha's suttas and you read the commentaries, oh, what a mess. They define Nibbana as a kind of weaving. Like what? What does weaving have to do with Nibbana? Nibbana simply and plainly means extinguishment. Like a candle being blown out. It doesn't have anything to do with weaving. But when scholars get a hold of it and they start to speculate and look into word roots and stuff like that, they come up with these nonsense explanations until finally the whole teaching is covered up by them. Another example is Nama Rupa. Huh? Nama Rupa means name and form. It's direct, it's obvious, it's clear. But the commentators say that Nama means bending. What? You see, and the same thing is going on with Ramana's teachings. People come up and say, oh, I was a student of Ramana, and I think he meant this. But thinking is not being. Knowing is not realization. The realization, the reality, the actual being is indescribable. That's the most we can say about it. It has to be experienced, not known. Because knowing always creates a boundary between the knower and the known and the knowledge. So don't know the truth. Huh? Don't try to become Brahman or God or the Supreme because you are already that and you have always been that. And simply to rest in that wordless, indescribable, inconceivable knowledge, that experience, that being, that is real enlightenment. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung.